In this video, we're going to walk through how to set up iReady and Autocrat for data chats. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to need a spreadsheet. And in this spreadsheet, you are going to need to put your student's name, your last name, your email address, their parents' email, their iReady scores. And then if it is winter, you can add that score. But for the first part, you're probably just going to have this section filled out. Once you have that section filled out, you're also going to have these two rows filled out as well. So you can see here my sample score, and I already have my stretch growth and typical growth typed in. You're going to do this for each of your students um, and every single class that you might have. So it is a little bit set up at the beginning, but once you have this data in, the winter and spring will be pretty easy to enter those scores. After I have kind of what I want, so I'm looking here and you can change any of these if you want to use um, the domains or something else, feel free to do so. But right here I've got my report and I really just want to focus on this data chat with the reflection. So what I'm going to do is I have my first and last name. I'm going to have my students' fall scores, their winter scores, their spring scores, and so on. We're going to show their stretch growth and their typical growth right here. Once we do that, there's going to be a parent check where this is going to be for the parents to work on. Um, and it's just going to have the parents say, hey, did you look at this? And they can say, yep, I reviewed it or no, I have not yet. And then you're able to follow up or have the child kind of follow up with their parent. In this box, they can delete and leave a comment to their child if they wish to do so. During the data chat, you might want to use this paper to help students kind of see some examples of progress, goals, and next steps. So um, one achievement that they're proud of, they're thinking ahead, their goals are, and how they're going to achieve their goals. So again, they might use some of these ideas or sentence starters to kind of help them form their own personal goals in which they're going to focus to improve in iReady. So now that we have our template um, figured out, and again, if you wanted to change any of these, you are totally able to do so. Um, you'll just need to make a copy of these documents and just make sure that these match um, with these. And then anytime there is a carrot, this is where it's going to personalize to this area for that student. So now we're going to go into extensions and we're going to go to Autocrat. We're going to click open. Now there is already um, some merges over here because I copied this document from something I was working on. So if you want to, you can just go ahead and use my template or you can start from a new job. This is saying there's some errors. So there are some errors because I did take out some information um, that I did have. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the pencil to edit the job. This first stop is just asking you, what is the name of this job? Really, it's just saying, hey, if there's multiple jobs, you're going to want to differentiate between those jobs. I'm just going to have one job. So iReady is perfect. It is pulling this document um, over to Autocrat. And actually, I want to use this public one um, just because I did make a little bit of changes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit use that one. And if you made a copy, you can pick which one is yours. You can also search your drive if it's not popping up in the most recent. Next step is to have those tags. Um, if you have multiple classes, you might have multiple tabs. So I want to make sure that this data chat is pulling from period one. And once I do that, I now am able to see that these automatically pulled over. And then I can go in and I am able to um, say where I want all of this information to be pulled from. So I actually pulled the wrong one. So let me pull the right one. And again, it's really important to make sure you're on the right tab. And it is not wanting to pull that document over. So let me go ahead and go ahead and find it in my drive. So again, this is just opening up my Google Drive. It's going to be the most recent documents up front. And right there is the one that I want. Let's see if it grabs it. There we go. And then now when we hit next, we should have our tags. Yep, that looks a lot better. So just double check that you have the right template as well. Right here, I want fall scores. I'm going to want the stretch growth. <clears throat> I'm going to want the typical growth. And what I'm just doing is matching all of these different um, tags so that way it personalized the data with the student's data and a student isn't getting someone else's score so this is just going to personalize that document then i'm going to hit next 
um, this is an important thing to think about. So on step four, your file name. Right here are all of your tags. And if you click, it automatically copies, and then you can just paste it, and it will go right in the name. This is going to rename the document. This option right here is going to make a copy of this slide for every single student. So that's one option that you could do. Another option is you can have it be a single output. And what a single output does is it puts every single student in one slide. So again, I can do multiple where it would be um, every single student gets this slide and it's gonna actually name it their name. So whatever you put right here, it's gonna put their name and then their iReady data chat. Or again, I can make every single student have a Google slide in my slide deck. So what I like to tell teachers is if you're emailing it, this option. If you are not emailing it and you're printing it, this option, because you can quickly print a hundred and some in one slide deck um, if you need to print. But again, if you are wanting it to go to every single person individually, you're going to want that option. All right, it's going to save in this folder, and I actually don't want it to. So I'm going to make a new folder, and I'm going to put responses. Because I want everything to go in here, and I just want my templates out here. So then I hit choose a folder, and that new folder should again be up top because it's searching by most recents. And then I hit select, and I go ahead and delete this folder. Next, we're going to skip 6 and 7. And this one is eight. So on eight, depending on what you chose um, from four is if you want to email it. So again, if you did the multiple output mode, you are going to want to email it. If you did the single one, you will not want to email all those scores out to your students because they will see every single scores and that would violate privacy. So right here, I'm going to hit yes, I want to share this. Um, it, is, it is an edible doc for this one because they are going to be typing on here and their parents are also going to be typing and moving things around. So student email, and then I'm just going to say, um, hello, we will be having a data chat in the next couple days. You will need this email for the data chat. Um, and then I could cut from, and then teacher if I wanted to. And I don't need it to run automatically. What that means is anytime, like maybe a Google form, anytime I enter data, it would just automatically send to the student. I don't want to do that. I want to manually hit play for this to work. So now that I've gotten all those steps set up, I'm ready to hit this play button. And what it's going to do is right in these fields, um, it is going to start working and it is going to email me um, my job of my data chat. And for you as a teacher, when you are ready to have these data chats with your students, you can click right here and that student's um, information is going to pull up so I can see right here there's my name there's my score and then I can have the student come up with those three goals once I do that I can share send it to the parent make it so that they're able to edit so that way they can mark if they've reviewed or have not reviewed and then they're able to also mark um, in this comment box if they want to type anything to their child um, so again it's just a great way to kind of start those data chats off and get the students kind of thinking and real quick, you can see I made an error with the student's name. So I actually need to go into the extension. And anytime you need to update it, you're just going to go into Autocrat. Hit the pencil. And then we're going to just find that step. And it's right there. And instead of student's name, um, I need this one right here because I forgot that I changed it to first name. And I actually want to do their last name. So I'm going to grab right there and I'm just going to do student's last name. And if I wanted to do their first name, why not? I'm going to add that right here. And now I've got their first name and last name and I'm going to hit save. And then what's going to happen is I could rerun it if I wanted to. I could also go right here and let's say I added winter in. So if I add in winter in, I need to delete J through M. So anything with the autocrat boxes, I need to delete those. And now I can add that this student maybe got a 500. And I can go in again, extensions, autocrat, open. Hit that play button. And again, my job is starting. So anytime you want to rerun this with new data, 
you just have to delete these boxes right here with the information and it will run for you again. So again, it corrected what I made wrong with my Stephanie Howe. Now my students have their fall score or their winter scores and they're able to make new reflections as well. So what a great way for some data chats with your students. And again, once you're done, you can click share, send it to the parent because you've got that email in the spreadsheet if that's what you choose to do. If not, you might not need to collect it. And then you can type an email in there to the parent. I have an email template right here if you want to copy, use, edit. Um, and I'm able to kind of copy and paste this with video directions and what the, the parent needs to do right to that parent. And then I'm able to hit send. So then that parent is notified. They then can come in and add comments and chat with their child about their scores as well and be a part of this process. Um, so cannot wait to see how you use this with data chat.